Do we have a right to hide from her that she has a grandson? We've hidden it for more than a quarter of a century. He's been told his father died in battle and his mother in childbirth, all of which is true. The place is extraordinary because it's one of the few parts of London that was conceived and executed as a whole. It wasn't built on top of Elizabethan London or Georgian London or any of the rest of it. It was a group of marshy fields on the edge of the city. And they had this idea, uh, the Marquis of Westminster's people presumably, uh, that it would, it, it would take another city of the rich, that there was so much money coming out of the, after the Napoleonic Wars, the new expansion of industrialization, manufacturing, trade overseas and so on. Uh, and there were this whole new generation of rich families were being created and Mayfair wasn't big enough to contain them all. And, and they decided that London was big enough to have a new area for fashionable palaces. And they um, got hold of the Cubitt brothers, Thomas and William Cubitt, who were brilliant, who were geniuses. Uh, and Thomas Cubitt had started out as a ship's carpenter, but he gradually reinvented the whole concept of building and developing. And together, they created this city within a very short period of time. I mean, something 25, 30 years. It was all built. And actually, although now, uh, it's, it's mainly divided into flats. It's never lost its status. Mm. It remains the Today, place of embassies and, yeah. and all of that and grand families and so on. You look as if you've seen a ghost. Are you all right? You remind me of someone I used to know. I'd just been reading a book about the Cubits, so I was kind of interested in that anyway. Uh, and I've always been rather obsessed with the Duchess of Richmond's fav famous ball just before Waterloo, well, before Quatre Bras, actually, and then two days later, Waterloo. Uh, and these glamorous young men going off to war from the ballroom and dying, in many cases, in their dress uniforms. Uh, and it uh, struck me as a tremendously... It's sort of one of the ultimate uh, romantic Romantic tragedies, history, it? yes. Yeah. Um, and, and I thought it'd be fun to combine the two, which needed um, a time jump from 1815 to 1842. And so I had to think of a story that gave us a time jump. The secret that she's not telling. Find out what it is. I mean, it's a more persuading. Most people who watch the show, whether in the United States or, or back in the UK, won't know anything about Waterloo and the ball that happened before it, or the Cubits. And, they, and most people in this country won't have heard of a neighborhood called Belgravia, and it couldn't matter less. At its heart, really, it's the story of these two mothers, isn't it? Yes. And their, their love for their, for their children, they both lost their children. Uh, both these mothers, have, you know, one has lost a daughter, the other has lost a son, and they will live and carry that grief for the rest of their lives. And that really is uh, the heart of it, uh, really the theme, I think. There are many themes, but for me, the central thing is, is a woman's love for her child. When you've gone through something really terrible, rather like a, a disease that nearly kills you or whatever, it changes you. And I think that Anne, Trenchard has been changed by the death of her daughter and she finds it very difficult as she loves him But she finds it very difficult to support her husband in his rather trivial interests of social advancement and snobbery and everything because to her What does any of this matter? I mean compared to the death of a child and so you've got those two I mean, it's not an unsuccessful marriage actually it's a successful one, but they are nevertheless pulling in slightly different directions. I would fight dragons if I thought I might have a chance of winning your heart. Supposing you should want to make it happen. I do want to make it happen. Life in many ways is about getting on. Mm -hmm. Today as much as in 1815 or 1415, you look at the society you're in and some people will not be content with the cards they have been dealt and they will want something more. They will want to advance themselves and have a life with more. Not everyone, not everyone by any means, but some then or now, and, and the story deals with that, really. And the things that you think you want when you're young and starting out, by the time you get them, are no longer the things that you particularly value, and your value system changes. I mean, that's true for everyone. And the era is interesting because you've got, you know, new money like the, the Trenchards, not only have they, they've had a, a good marriage together, but he's been highly successful. He's a very, very ambitious man and determined to break into society. So it's a very interesting um, place and time, so the location and the era that plays to a lot of what we do and, and we've done in the past, this, you know, whether people are in or out of society, how you break into it, the, the, the comedy of manners of observing all these customs and, and rituals, which 
you know, we think make, makes for fantastic drama. It's a period, it was a period of tremendous social change. Well, really, Queen Victoria's reign, uh, right the way through, was a period of social change. It's sometimes quite wrongly seen now as a very static period, a very secure period where nothing much changed. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, and in fact, these stakes were changing and rising. The whole of the Midlands and the North was turning into one of the great industrial centers of Europe. It was an extraordinary time to be alive, really. What is the secret you're not telling me? <laughs>